Welcome to War Crimes Gaming. Alright, what you guys see in front of you, this is the build that I'm going to put together. Um, basically what I want is a build that can play 1080p, 40 to 60 frames for, per second. Uh, any of the newest games. Sort of try to give a, I guess, the chance for the PS4 and the Xbox One um, to get everything situated. I know uh, Xbox One just came out with a new update. So I want to have them give them a chance, kind of, to get their game together. Been out a minute, and for some of the PC parts to come down in price, so make it comparable. Now, what you see in front of you is not $400. There is no way that I think that you can go out and spend $400 only and get a PC to work comparatively to uh, the consoles. The reason is that the consoles make no money whatsoever. They make all their money in games and the $10 a month or the $50 a year that you spend in uh, the gold or the PS Plus memberships. So taking that into consideration, most console gamers are going to go out and buy that $400 system. They're also going to add a, a control. We'll also purchase the uh, Xbox Live Gold or the, uh, I think it's the PS Plus, PlayStation Plus. So that is anywhere from $50 to $60 extra a year. The average lifespan of a console is, they say, 10 years. We're just going to cut that in half, to be fair. Five years. Adding all those together, that gives me about a $700 budget to put a computer together that would be able to PS4 or Xbox One. Um, and that's what our overall goal is to do. Now, this will be a multi-part series. Uh, I have friends that are like, hey, dude, how do you build computers? Uh, even though there's thousands of videos out there, I will put one together. This is fairly simple. Um, so we'll go step by step. That'll be part two. Um, part two will probably be unboxing some of the things, going a little bit more in detail, uh, assembling it. Uh, part three, once it's all assembled, I'm just going to test it on some of the games I have. If you guys have games that you want me to play, uh, Metro Last Light or Battlefield 4, uh, Tomb Raider, those are like the normal games that you run benches on. I'll run benches on Heaven and see how it does. Everything completely stopped. And then what we'll do is we'll put a an overclock uh, for you non-PC gamer guys. Basically, we're just going to turn up the power on our graphics card and our processor, hopefully. And I'll show you those in a second where we, where we want to get. And, and then compare how well a $700 system, not counting rebates, I didn't take those out, um, will be able to compete against the uh, consoles for a sort of head-to-head. -head. So if you do have videos and you want me to include those in the uh, upcoming videos, I'll probably do this once a week. I'll try to put it out on Thursday or Friday of each week. Uh, send the videos in, Dropbox them to me. Um, uh, I'll see if I can't get those in. Alright, now here are our console gaming specs. So you're looking at the RAM for the uh, Xbox One. 8 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, it's DDR3. You can read it up here. It's clocked to 2133 megahertz. Um, CPU is an 8 core at 1.75 gigahertz. Uh, GPU is clock speed of 853 and they I think their new uh, update the Xbox one just did it kind of took away some of the power from the uh, the connect and pushed it towards its GPU so I think they overclocked their GPU to 853 or a little bit higher because I think it was originally 800 uh, shader cores on that is a 6 or a 768 uh, teraflops 1.23 processors are 768 has 500 gigs of storage that's non replaceable and of course it uses USB 3.0 and 
and an optical Blu-ray DVD drive. The PS4 is also a 8 gigabytes of RAM. It's a DDR5 RAM at 5500 megahertz. So uh, I've seen things go back and forth saying DDR5 RAM has some issues. I don't know. PC guys, we can't use DDR5 RAM. Um, it would seem faster. And at 5500, I, I can't touch that on a PC. So that side of the house is going to be faster than a PC, I would say. Now how that incorporates with everything else, I don't know. But when you look at the CPU, uh, it's an 8 core. Uh, it's specially engineered. Both of these are an AMD based. Um, it's an 8 core. It's, I think it's called a Jaguar. Uh, 1.6 gigahertz on a 2.75 gigahertz capable chip. So I don't know if that is a an overclock that they put on there or if that's a boost of some sort. But the GPU that the uh, PS4 handles is an AMD. It's a next generation Radeon based graphics card. Um, 0.84 better than the PS or the uh, Xbox One um, processing. A GPU core is 1152. It has a clock, a GPU clock of 800, and then 1152 uh, stream processors. This is from their site. This is where I got this information. And again, this one does have 500 gig hard drive built in, USB 3.0, um, Blu ray, same as the other one. And I didn't put that up on the PS1, but the PS4 is they're the same. They're right now they're not backward compatible. What will happen in the future? I don't know. You guys, if you're a console gamer, know better than me. Um, I don't need to worry about that as a PC guy. I can play games from 20 years ago. It doesn't matter. So that is for your consoles. All right, now here is basically what our build is going to be, the nuts and bolts of it. For RAM, we're going to go with a G-Skill Ripsaw X-Series. We're going 8 gigabytes. It's DDR3, and that's at 2400. For the CPU, it's AMD A10-7850K. I know some of you other gamers out there are be like, dude, you could have saved money, bought this. Um, I got a pretty good deal on this processor. Um, so that's why I went with this one. But it's a four core, so they ate like the, um, the consoles. It runs at 3.7 and it has a turbo of four gigahertz. What we're gonna do on the second portion of this is try to get at least get 4.5 gigahertz overclock on it. Um, the GPU is a Sapphire Dual X R9 270. Maybe went a little overboard on it, but we'll see. We probably could have put a cheaper card in there. Um, but I did like this card, and it was at a decent price. It's already overclocked. Uh, 920. Core clock speed, and it has a boost already of a 945 megahertz core. We're going to... And also, it's a 2 gig card, and it's DDR5. 5600 uh, hertz is effective what's on there. We're going to try to get an overclock of a 1010 and then a memory overclock of a 5920. We have a 1 terabyte Western Digital Blue. Uh, on our motherboard, we also have USB 3.0. And our power supply is a 500 watt Bronze Corsair CX500. So that kind of sums up the nuts and bolts. Uh, we'll go piece by piece uh, next week, and I look forward to talking to you guys then. And uh, subscribe, like, please. Really enjoy it. I'll talk to you guys later.